Hello um, and welcome to this uh, Ivy TechX webinar on the topics of print and electronics for the automotive industry. My name is Harry Zerbos. I'm an analyst with Ivy TechX. And in the next 10 minutes or so, I'm going to discuss a few points that relate to the uptake of printed electronic technologies into the automotive sector. Quickly, before we get started, I just wanted to give an idea of what IDTechX does. We are a consulting firm that's active in doing market research, uh, bespoke consulting, and also holding events on the topics that you see on the left uh, on this slide, ranging from uh, 3D printing, uh, printed electronics, uh, RFID, energy harvesting and storage, many, many other topics, uh, all the way to wearable technologies and robotics, some of the newest topics that we take. Now, uh, like I mentioned before, we uh, are going to be discussing the uptakes of printed and flexible electronics in the automotive sector and what the expectation is for the next decade or so in terms of what technologies are going to be of interest here and which ones are going to be uh, taking up some of the significant market that it is the automotive uh, industry is expected to be for printed electronics. So, um, looking at printed electronics as a whole, uh, in 2015, so last year, the printed electronics market was worth 24.5 billion, as you can see, led by uh, display technologies based on all the displays, sensors, printed sensors, and conductive inks. Uh, now, what we are expecting to see is that in the next decade, the market for printed and flexible electronics within the automotive sector is expected to grow to over five and a half billion. Now, these technologies uh, that are already a few hundred million dollars in 2016 can be categorized into three major types. Some of these technologies are already mature and are not expected to grow very fast. Others are relatively big markets already, but they're expected to grow much faster and become much more significant than they already are, while others are expected to take quite a bit of time until they sort of like identify what the best plays are for these technologies and until we actually see them deployed in vehicles. So, um, as you can see here, out of the total market in 2026, the most significant segment of this market is going to be taken up by all the displays, followed by uh, IME consoles with IME standing for in mode electronics, something I'm going to be discussing in the next few slides. Um, just a few points about some of the most important markets that will be covered uh, within, within the report that has been launched on the topic, but also uh, um, will be, be significant markets. So, um, starting with conductive inks and paste, they're being used in cars already in significant uh, volumes in applications such as uh, seat heaters or, uh, or occupancy sensors in seats, as well as conductive inks used in uh, rear view window and uh, backlight defoggers, for instance. These are both significant markets already today, uh, but there's also uh, Markets that are quite significant today, but are expecting to grow as well using conductive inks. And those would include uh, printing, um, functionalized inks, uh, and things like capacitive sensors of light or lighting elements into uh, components that will then subsequently be um, thermoformed and injection molded into uh, 3D shapes. And by doing that, allow for uh, design freedom, lighter weight, and utilization of uh, less uh, space and less weight uh, in applications. So looking at what these devices might look like, as you can see in the slide here, um, they tend to, to save quite significant amount of space. They still, in many cases, uh, connect with conventional PCB boards, but that is expected to change even more extensively over the next few years. But what it really uh, offers as a device, a device of this type here, is the ability to keep more value in-house for companies that want to offer um, more elegant solutions to their customers than uh, things like, say, uh, electromechanical uh, switches and, uh, and, and, and similar devices of that type. In addition, and like I mentioned already before, all the displays are going to be the most significant market uh, in the next decade. 
Uh, a lot of these devices are already being utilized in passive matrix all the displays that you can see in instrument cl clusters in car interiors. But what will also be significant is a significant volume of active matrix on the displays with applications being targeted ranging from central stacks uh, and seat back displays all the, all the way to digital rear view mirrors that are currently being developed. Additionally, a significant market for uh, for thermal interface materials already exists within the uh, automotive industry, and obviously with the huge variety of uh, um, interfaces of electronic devices within a complete vehicle, there is a wide variety of applications where we'll see um, thermal interface materials being utilized. Um, some of the most significant uh, volumes of these materials are thermal greases, that are currently predominantly screen printed or syringe dispensed, but we are also seeing significant developments with materials based on carbon nanotubes and phase change materials that can also take up some uh, market uh, share in the next few years, assuming that their suitability for automotive application is proven in, in the short to mid term. Finally, the report does not only cover applications where we already see a significant um, market existing already or expected to, to exist in the next decade. We also look at applications where uh, there is an interest in deploying a specific type of device, but there are significant challenges with those applications and we try to understand as to why these applications and these devices are challenging when it comes to being integrated in vehicles. A good example of that, for example, uh, is uh, printed and flexible photovoltaics that have been demonstrated and showcased in many prototypes and demonstrators in the past. But unfortunately, what the issue tends to be in this place, in, in this space, is that the power output for these devices is still relatively low when compared to the power requirements of the devices that uh, and the subsystems that these solar cells are meant to power. So as long as we see um, such high power requirements versus low power outputs from flexible and printed versions of photovoltaics, it's going to be difficult to see further uh, growth and further uptake within the automotive industry for photovoltaics. There's also a lot of interest in haptics technologies within the automotive sector. And although some of these technologies are printed, again, these will take a bit more time than the next decade or so to see them commercialized. So although the interest is there, we're still going to see a few more years of research and development and identification of the right type of applications in the haptic space before we actually see actual significant uptake. E-textiles and fabric-based uh, electronics are, of course, going to be of interest here. Again, they're replacing complex structures with fully integrated lightweight panels on which we could see dispersed a wide array of different electronics uh, with different functionalities. There's a lot of research, there's a lot of interest, of course, there's a big interest in the topic of electronic textiles in general that has been, um, uh, that has started becoming more and more interesting as wearable electronics are, are becoming more proliferated. So we're expecting to see a lot of interesting things happening in this space in the next decade. So to conclude, with a very brief overview of the technologies incorporated uh, in vehicles based on printed, flexible, or organic electronics, we're expecting to see a market that will grow over to, to over five and a half billion by 2026, uh, mostly spearheaded by growth of devices such as structural and in mold electronics and all the display technologies. Other technologies might take a bit more time uh, to take off, while um, additional technologies might still remain in the next decade at least uh, not mature enough for further adoption. So some of the market uh, data that you will be able to see uh, within the report in this space are demonstrated here and like I mentioned already, uh, the growth that we're expecting to see in the next few years is going to be led by all the displays and in mold electronic consoles that are starting to grow significantly right now. For more information, obviously, on the, on the report, 
as well and additional services from iTechX, please follow the uh, link here or you could reach out re directly to me. My contact details and email address are here. Thank you very much for your attention and have a good day.